Every console generation, a new way to play video games is introduced. From cartridges to discs in digital formats, memory cards to hard drives and cloud saves, from four players to 100 players. Heck, the next generation of consoles like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X are upon us, bringing faster load times and ray tracing to the console space for the first time. For as long as people remember it, consoles are dominated by the big three, Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox. A fourth pillar does exist, but it's hard for me to say that personal computers are on the same level as consoles, mainly because they are used for far more than just gaming. For the sake of this argument, let's say that PCs are a part of this ecosystem. There have been other companies who attempted to take a slice of the market share, but were unsuccessful for various reasons. Enter Google and the relatively new game service, Stadia. Google Stadia is a new competitor in the console space, but the unique thing is, it's not a console. It's not even a device you set up on your TV or monitor. It's an online service that enables you to play video games on the cloud anywhere and everywhere, as long as there's an internet connection. Stadia, while not the first of its kind, is certainly one of the more successful online services, but that isn't saying much when you consider how similar services like OnLive performed in the past. Is Stadia the best of its kind? Will this replace the traditional console platforms we've grown accustomed to for decades? Let's find out. So how does Stadia work? How is it possible to play a game without buying a console or a dedicated gaming computer? On the surface, it's as straightforward as it gets. Think of it as watching a movie on Netflix. I mentioned in an earlier video that Xbox Game Pass is the Netflix of video games. Stadia takes that term literally. Instead of downloading a digital file or inserting a disc, you're streaming a game much like streaming a movie or a TV show. All of the backend work is based on Google servers. Stadia isn't tied to a physical device like a PlayStation 4 or a computer. It's a platform where consumers can enjoy playing video games everywhere they go. It can be played on a smart TV, a desktop, a laptop, or a mobile phone as long as it has a screen. Stadia is a service that's currently available for all consumers, but for those who want more out of the service, they can sign up for Stadia Pro, a premium service where, according to the Stadia website, players can play games in 4K resolution, provided you have the appropriate internet speed to do so. On top of that, players will receive discounts on certain games on Stadia and some free games from time to time, such as Destiny 2 The Collection and Grid. I'm totally aware of what Stadia has done wrong in terms of reliability and service, but I'll save those for later. For now, I want to talk about what Stadia has at least done right first. What Google has provided is no short of impressive. As long as you have an active Stadia account, you can carry the games you own anywhere you go. I can play the games I own on Stadia and play them on a desktop one moment and play them on a laptop or a Google device like Chromecast in another. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is notorious for being poorly optimized on consoles. On Stadia, I am able to play it at a smooth 60 frames per second. Stadia has their own controller, but you can use any other third-party controller like an Xbox One controller. It should be noted, however, that the Stadia controller can only be used wirelessly, while other controllers must be used with a wired connection. It's a small issue, but Google has noted that wireless support for third-party controllers are in the pipeline. Wait, that's all the positives you had for Stadia? To be fair, I didn't say it was an extensive list of positives. With that out of the way, let's go over what Stadia does wrong. And believe me, there is a lot of wrong. First, the reliability of the service. To put it simply, when it works, it works. In some cases, it feels like playing the real thing. There's a little bit of input lag when playing something like Grid, but it's not enough to detract from the experience. And when it doesn't work, it really doesn't work. You don't need to take my word for it. Take a look at this footage. No, this isn't your internet trying to buffer the video. This is an example of Stadia running on an unstable connection. 
you'll experience things like resolution degradation, delayed response time, and skips. In fairness, I don't have the greatest connection in the world, but I've had online matches from other games that are much better than playing any game on Stadia on unstable connections. I would rather play Marvel 3 online matches than deal with Stadia. Those who know, know what I'm talking about. Then we have the target audience for the platform. As a newly established platform in a competitive environment like video games, you need to have a reason to have consumers use your services. For example, the PlayStation and Nintendo platforms are home to a diverse and recognizable lineup of franchises that are either newly established or were ongoing since 1985. Meanwhile, the Xbox platform offers services such as Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Play Anywhere. What does Stadia have that the consumers want? Quite frankly, not a lot. The only thing Stadia has going for, it's simply convenience. The games that are offered, while great in their own right, are titles that are at least a year old, with the exception of Doom Eternal and the Stadia exclusive Guilt. Speaking of which, as of writing the script, Guilt is the only Stadia exclusive title in the store. You mean to tell me that Stadia doesn't have an exclusive lineup of games readily available during its launch year? Sure, the Switch released in 2017 with two games, but The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is arguably the only game worth buying the system in the first place. Guilt isn't a game I wouldn't buy for the service. Yeah, more Stadia exclusive titles are coming, but there is little to no information on that topic. It's not a good sign when you hear that only now they're developing new Stadia games with their sole first party studio. If you own a console like a PlayStation 4, an Xbox One, or a Nintendo Switch, there's no reason to use Stadia because you can play those games locally on top of the other services these platforms offer. Doubly so if you own a capable PC. I mean, it couldn't have been marketed for the tech-savvy individuals or rich families because one would assume that they would already have the latest and most powerful PCs to run the list of Stadia games in 4K and 8K in extremely rare cases at max settings. This is including mod support and customizable rigs. Well, maybe it's for low-income gamers. As long as they have a controller and a screen, there should be no problem, right? Not when you consider factors outside of Stadia, such as internet service providers having data caps. Take a look at this. The minimum requirement for playing a Stadia game is 10 megabits per second. If we were to calculate this at an hourly rate, Stadia would use approximately 4.5 gigabytes per hour. This isn't even including other services that consumers use like Netflix and console downloads. Needless to say, it all adds up. And you can forget about playing on the go, unless you're on a Wi-Fi connection at all times. Playing Stadia games on your phone will drain your battery and data faster than you can say KAPOOYA KAPOOYA! And finally, and this is an important one, the pricing model of the service. While there's currently no barrier of entry to using the service, it doesn't mean consumers can play games for free. All games on the Stadia platform must be purchased. Some of the prices on these games seem a bit too steep when you consider that some of them are as old as 2013 and priced at least $20 when you can find a used copy for half of that amount. Remember those free games I mentioned when you become a Stadia Pro subscriber? You don't even get to keep those games when you decide to unsubscribe from their service. Even Xbox lets you keep their free games offerings when you unsubscribe from their gold uh, subscription. Now, I'm no expert in business, but if there's a way to improve Stadia, I would rethink the business proposition of the platform. I would replace the idea of purchasing games with a subscription-based model where consumers can pay $10 to $15 a month to gain access to a library of games. These games can be streamed through the internet, but let the consumers have the option to download a digital version of the game on their computer, in case something's wrong with Google servers or if the player's internet connection is unstable on a random day. That way, consumers can play console quality games on the go and in the comfort of their own home. If there's enough demand for it, maybe add a premium subscription option that enables 4K and HDR support. I'm not saying this idea would improve Stadia, but it's better than what the platform has now, at least in my eyes. The question remains, will this replace traditional consoles and PCs? At this time, no. 
At some point, however, there may be a future for this type of service, and it's for the same reason why consumers prefer digital downloads over physical media. Convenience. Think about it. Instead of wasting time inserting a disc or going through the dashboard, the game is readily available to play on any device with a screen. This doesn't just apply to Stadia. It's also regarding other services like GeForce Now and Project xCloud. The problem is that the tech is too early to use when factors outside of gaming are out of control, such as ISPs throttling internet speeds, or simply not enough people having access to the internet. And I think that's one of Stadia's few mistakes. Google assumed that everyone has blazing fast internet speeds when the opposite is true, at least in the US, though the problems don't stop there. Between missing features that the competition has and the conflicting marketing, Stadia has all the potential in the world that not many people asked for.